Hi everyone, it's me, Fire Mails. Time for another video. And today's topic I wanted to talk about. Now, I have done a video um, about voice before, but I thought I would do another updated video with more of encouragement because uh, some of my older videos are still learning how to talk on camera and things like that. And so there was a lot of ums and ahs. And I definitely would say that as time has gone on through the um, couple of years that I've been doing um, vlogs now, uh, mm -hmm. I feel a lot more articulate when I'm talking to everyone at home than I used to and a lot more confident with my voice. Now, female having a female voice is something that I would have struggled with for many, many years, still am. Um, now, I'm a singer, for anyone who doesn't know, so I've been singing for many years. I have quite a big range, so I can sing female songs very easily, but my speaking voice, getting it to sound what I would call um, passable has somewhat eluded me still. So I just wanted to talk about this because sounding feminine and passing, as it were, is very important to all of us, I'm sure. All trans women will agree that we all want to sound convincing as a woman when we speak um, and not be misgendered on the phone or in public when someone hasn't seen you, when they're not looking. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there are various things that you can do for this. You can go and have voice surgery, which has its ups and downs. You know, it's not completely 100%. Um, I've not met anyone who's actually had any of that done but I've seen videos online, so you never really know how successful it is because unless you're actually speaking to the person that's had it down, of course. Um, and then of course there is, you can train yourself to sound more feminine. Now I would definitely say that my voice over the years has got more feminine than what it used to be. Um, but I have mm -hmm. noticed this weird thing and I've noticed it with a couple of my other friends as well. So if anyone has experienced this as well, then, mm -hmm. then let me know. But um, I'm, I'm not that worried about my voice anymore. I've got to an age now where I really honestly don't care what people think. And as long as I'm happy with my life, then that's all that I care about. I, I can honestly say that. But obviously when I was younger, um, there were lots of things that really worried me uh, or that I wanted to change and that kind of stuff. And there's still things now that, you know, annoy me or upset me, but a lot of those things I can't change or I've just accepted that that's the way they are and, you know, we just get on with life. You know, there are more important things in our life that we can focus on. And if they are really, really important to you, then you will do something about it. If if uh, my voice becomes gets to the point for me where I can't stand it anymore, then maybe I'd go and have surgery or I'd spend a very intensive time trying to make it more feminine. Um, but what I was trying to say, yes. So, I almost forgot what I was talking about then. So the issue that I've had is that, um, well, it's not really an issue, but it's something I've noticed. I have a very close um, family. My family are all very accepting of me and everything is very close and we all talk and there's no problems. There's, and obviously, from the, apart from the beginning of my transition, when everyone, it just took everyone a lot of time to get used to that fact, even though they're accepting of it, it still takes time for people to get used to it. Because everyone's been okay with me with that, I've never had to... Uh, survive as it were as far as uh, passing because I always had my family support I was never kicked out or anything like that so I'm comfortable around my family and I've always been accepted as a trans woman so my need mm -hmm. to get my voice to sound more feminine has not kind of been instinctive it's something that I would have had to purposely do for it to change and because um, I've not needed to do that around my family or anything, uh, I don't think that's why it's changed. And I have a couple of other friends who are in similar situations. Uh, you know, I've been a trans woman for 20 years now, but the voice thing is, was something I never really uh, spent a lot of time trying to do. Or, or in my head, it was never something that, that was that important for me to do. And I think it comes down to the fact that it was because... I didn't need to, you know, if I'd been chucked out and I had to move away or I had to live on my own as a woman and I had to look after myself and protect myself from the outside world, I would have, I think, instinctively changed my voice, like completely made it completely unpassable because you're trying to protect yourself in, in a world that still has issues with us and, you know, it's frightening. So I think that's, that's how that would have happened. Uh, but because I never experienced that, um, and I know a lot of girls have to go through that kind of stuff, which I just can't even imagine what that's like. But I was very, very lucky in the fact that that never happened to me. So I never went through that period of like sheer panic of where I had to make my voice sound ultra convincing. Um, because 
I, I was loved and, and I didn't have that fear that I needed to do it. And, I, and so now, if I ever did try to do that, um, my family would be like, why are you talking like that? What's going on? You know, so it's, I think it's kind of like a psychological thing, but I just wanted to say to any young girls who are transitioning now, um, or anyone who's been trans transitioning for a long time, who still is struggling with their voice, you know, I know exactly how that feels. I know how horrible it is to me be misgendered on the phone or when you're out in public and you may talk to somebody or answer the phone and other people look around at you as to say, where is that voice coming from? Um, you know, it's okay, you know, um, our voices, you know, we are always going to hear our voices different to how other people hear our voices, you know, and I'm sure some people will think I sound completely fine and other people will think I sound, you know, very masculine. Uh, that's their opinion, that's their, up to them to think what they want, you know, I'm not going to worry about it and that's the point, you know, don't worry about what other people think. I know that that is such a difficult thing to even fathom uh, when you're in the beginning stages of your transition to even, like, you're so worried about what people think. You're so worried about what people's reaction are going to be when they see you in public uh, or hear you or any of those things. You know, it's, it is very frightening uh, when you first start transitioning. And the voice is a very important part of it, I'm not going to lie. And, you know, I think it's important to just put it in perspective and just sort of realise that, you know, you need to, you know, it's not the most important thing in the world and you can change it if you need to change it or if you want to change it. But if you don't, it doesn't matter, you know, because, you know, we are who we are. It doesn't matter. You know, we should be able to be allowed to be with who, be who we are without being judged by anybody, you know. And obviously people expect you to sound a certain way because people expect women to sound a certain pitch, you know. But I have loads of female friends who have very deep, husky voices um so you know everyone's different and it's fine and i just wanted to come on here and say this because i know so many girls who struggle with it and you know there are lots of options that you can do um but if you don't want to that's fine do you know what i mean just be strong and confident in yourself and it'll be fine honestly mm -hmm. if anyone has any questions they want to ask me about anything then leave me some uh, messages in the description box and if anyone has had their voice done uh, i'd love to hear from them and hear what it's uh, how good the procedure was for them and how, how happy they are with it and whether it really works properly because I've never actually spoken to anyone who's done it, who, who it, you know, that it worked for, that they were really happy with the results. So I'd be really interesting to see um, how it turns out because it is definitely something I have considered in the past, but obviously being a singer, um, I didn't want it to ruin my singing voice, whereas where I couldn't sing properly. And from all my experiences of friends who've had it done, um, they said that you wouldn't be able to sing again afterwards. So for me, that is never an option um, because I have to mm -hmm. sing every day. It's very important to me. So, um, yeah, so that's why I've never even contemplated having that surgery done because um, my singing voice is too important to me. I'd rather keep my voice as it is and be able to sing than have a totally passable voice and not be able to sing every day because that would drive me insane. You know, singing is very important to me. Anyway, just a sort, short, quick video. I know I sound quite rushed, but um, I just wanted to throw this on here because I'd seen a few posts about different things with voices and, you know, I just wanted to give you my side of my story and my journey with my voice so far. So have a great day, everyone. Speak to you soon. Lots of love.